The Secret Knowledge of All Eras Imagine a character that appears in different cultures with various names. This character represents the universal spirit, a cosmic martyr that embodies eternal goodness celebrated all over the world. Now let me tell you about the captivating narrative of Chiram and his tragic death at the hands of three fellow craftsmen, each guarding one of the doors of the temple. This story is loaded with esoteric symbolism that goes beyond surface-level understanding. Chiram, refusing to reveal sacred secrets, is attacked by each thug using a different tool, a ruler, a square, and a mallet. These instruments represent the trials and tests in the Masonic journey towards finding the lost true word. But hold on, it doesn't end there. After his death, Chiram is buried with a branch of acacia and symbolically resurrected through the strong grip of the lion's paw by the figure of the Master Mason. Now, if we delve deeper into this story, we see Chiram as an archetype of humanity, a reflection of Plato's idea of man, who undergoes spiritual degradation and needs regeneration. This story aligns with ancient astronomical and philosophical cycles, reaching back to the celebrations of the Osiris cult in Egypt and the hermetic Hermes Trismegistus. It highlights the interconnection of all the great mystical and esoteric traditions. But wait, there's more. Chiram's story is linked to the martyrdom of Jacques de Molay, the last Grand Master of the Templars. This connection brings us to more recent historical events, including speculations about Elias Ashmole, the assassination of King Charles I, the Templar Order, and the figure of Sir Francis Bacon. These connections suggest a possible reinterpretation of the Masonic myth in line with Baconian ideals of universal democracy and education. In conclusion, the legendary story of Kiram is a rich allegory that encapsulates the search for spiritual elevation and purification in Freemasonry. It offers a map for the alchemical transformation of the human being, always promising redemption through persevering work in the construction of a personal and universal temple of wisdom and fraternity. Now let's dive even deeper into the mystical essence of Freemasonry, where hides a sacred knowledge of spiritual fire known as Kiram. This fire travels up the spine, reaching the pinnacle of human regeneration. Imagine this spiritual fire, when elevated through all 33 segments of the spinal column, entering the dome chamber of the human skull, and finally reaching the pituitary gland, metaphorically named Isis, which activates the pineal gland, or Ra, revealing the knowledge of the sacred name. This process, full of symbolism, reflects the highest aim of operative masonry, the opening of the Eye of Horus, the Eye of Wisdom and Spiritual Enlightenment. The focus is now on the pineal gland, often represented in ancient times as a pine cone. It is considered the sacred eye, the third eye of the ancients. And guess what? Various cultures emphasize its esoteric importance. In mystical tradition, spiritual vitality is symbolized and channeled through celestial and bodily systems, where each organ and each zodiac sign plays a role in this grand archetypal work. Now picture this oriental painting described in the book. It portrays three solar explosions associated with Hindu deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Each explosion corresponds to a region of the body, representing spiritual and physical energy centers. This symbolism extends beyond the human body and reaches Western mystical teachings, suggesting the universality of mystical principles. But let me tell you, there's even an astronomical aspect to Kiram's story. It relates his tragedy to the cycle of the sun through the zodiac signs, giving rise to countless legends and interpretations in different cultures. The rise and fall of the sun, its murder by the winter signs, its journey through darkness until resurrection with the spring equinox, all these are allegories of the spiritual process of elevation, fall, and redemption. Ultimately, Charam represents the cosmic creative force within every individual, trapped within material limitations until liberated through esoteric knowledge and practice. He symbolizes the divine potential within each person, waiting to be fully expressed, hindered only by the laws of the material world, symbolized by his three assassins. And finally, this excerpt makes it clear that true beauty and harmony are fundamental principles for the development of the soul. Environments of aesthetic richness can positively influence human growth, Ancient masters sought to erect structures and create a culture that evoked the highest noble sentiments, contributing to spiritual advancement.
So there you have it. The Masonic narrative is not just a story built around rituals and symbols, but a cartography of the soul's journey, reflecting a continuous search for wisdom, enlightenment, and beauty amidst apparent contradictions and the challenges of physical experience. And you know what? The mystery continues. In the heart of New York, the mysterious marks on the pedestal of Cleopatra's needle are not mere decorations. They are recognized as symbols of great Masonic importance. These symbols, spanning continents and cultures, can also be found engraved in historical buildings, from the Taj Mahal to the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's truly an ancient, hidden, and universal language that survives within stone. These marks are the legacy of ancient architects and builders, a brotherhood that stretches back thousands of years with Kurama Bif at its forefront. For them, the creation of buildings wasn't just a physical activity. It was a sacred practice, weaving the laws of the universe into the structures they erected. Each carved and marked stone represented an offering to the great architect of the universe, sealing eternity with every touch of the chisel. But listen to this. These marks carry more than just practical significance. They hold the essence of a deeper teaching, a lesson on the relationship between matter and spirit. According to this view, the three degrees of masonry represent an eternal spiritual drama where the Grand Master is symbolically murdered and buried within the structure he built. However, this master can be resurrected through contemplation and understanding of the wisdom embedded in the architecture, revealing a philosophy that transcends the physical structure itself. The legend of Kairam Abif is also a metaphor for perennial philosophy, often attacked by the state the church, and the masses. The revival of ancient mysteries, just as in Karam's story where he whispers a secret knowledge following his resurrection, can signify the return of lost wisdom essential for the progress of civilization. But hold on tight, my friends, because the true nature of Freemasonry goes even further. It's almost like a silent religion. It seeks enlightenment and unity between God and man paving the way for a utopian civilization led by wise and enlightened individuals. In this civilization, truth, symbolized by Chiram, permeates every particle of the cosmos. This ideal is reflected in a visionary university, a place of learning for both sacred and secular sciences, where spiritual, mental, moral, and physical life is taught in a pure and dogma-free manner. It is a society governed by wisdom, where every form and symbol represents an eternal truth. Now, Brace yourselves, because the genesis of these ideas can be traced back to Pythagoras. He viewed music not only as an art, but as a manifestation of the cosmic order expressed in mathematics and harmony. He saw the relationship between the weights of hammers and the tones they produced, creating the diatonic scale. The weights mirrored the cosmos, each in its place, creating a perfect harmony reflected in the beautiful symmetry of the tetractus a pyramid of points symbolizing the relationship between numbers and musical intervals. According to Pythagoras, music is the visible sound of the harmonious order governing the universe. And now we move on to the next chapter where Pythagorean theory of music and color collide, forming a new understanding of universal harmony and how everything, from the tiniest atom to the realm of fixed stars, is intrinsically linked by the principle of harmonious beauty. In this plunge into esoteric knowledge, we encounter a cartography of the invisible, a map that reveals the energetic and substantial gradations between the earthly realm and an absolute and unconditioned force. Through fifteen descending spheres, from eternal and unlimited life to the four concrete elements, a pyramid of energy and a pyramid of substance demonstrate their proportions at the heart of these planes of existence. In Pythagoras's imagined world, music isn't just an art, it is a divine science anchored in numbers and mathematical proportions, reflecting the order established by the universal good. Here, every part of creation is tuned to a tone, a harmonic interval, a number, a color, and a form. But Pythagoras went even further, suggesting that stars in the heavens also have their own harmony, guided by harmonic relationships that appropriately echo into the modern laws of octave chemical bonding. Pythagoras believed that music was a remedy for the body and soul, capable of healing through what he called musical medicine. It was remarkably powerful, able to calm a drunken and violent youth simply by changing the mode of the music, 
or to halt a vengeful act through the magnetic attraction of musical modulations. Pythagoras's healing music served in various forms of treatment, ranging from disordered emotions to physical conditions. Different melodies were applied to different disorders of the soul. Musical education was fundamental in the upbringing of Greek youth, a foundation that should be pure and dignified, rejecting any lascivious influence. Finally, the mysterious concept of the music of the spheres, the cosmic chant emitted by celestial bodies in their orbits, was central to Pythagorean cosmology. Though details of this theory remain elusive, it is clear that Pythagoras viewed the universe as an immense monochord stretched between the absolute spirit and absolute matter. Through this monochord, a universe orchestrated in a divine symphony is revealed, with each planet contributing its distinct tone to the celestial harmony. And here we are, ascending the sonic scale from micro to macrocosm, where music intertwines with the very fabric of our being. It demonstrates humanity's eternal quest to understand the hidden connections that dance to the grand invisible maestro, which is the universe. In our journey through the secret knowledge of all eras, we have arrived at the cosmic conception where the seven heavens sing in harmony, creating a melody that perpetually praises the Creator. They likely follow the ascending order established by Pythagoras, from the moon, the first heaven, to the higher spheres. So buckle up, my friends, for this extraordinary exploration of knowledge. We're just scratching the surface of this rich book. There's so much more waiting to be discovered, from ancient wisdom to mystical teachings, from the secrets hidden within symbols to the grand symphony of the universe. Stay tuned for the next chapter, where we will dive into the realms of color and the wonders they hold in understanding the mysteries of existence. Welcome back to my channel where I bring you the most detailed book summaries that will blow your mind. Today we're diving into the mystical world of O Conocimiento Secreto de Todas as Eras, the secret knowledge of all eras, an enlightening book that explores the ancient wisdom of civilization's past. In this segment, we uncover the hidden teachings of Pythagoras and how they shape the understanding of music and color. Picture this, the soothing melodies of the harp, originally with only seven strings, were enriched by Pythagoras with an eighth string. Each string represented a connection between the human body and the celestial bodies. These sacred Egyptian songs were believed to be so powerful that they were considered the building blocks of the universe itself. But music is not the only realm where color holds great significance. Light, my friends, is not just an optical phenomenon. It's a vibration that shapes and defines life. Just like music, light and its colors have the power to influence and mold the world around us, even if we can't perceive them with our everyday senses. The ancient civilizations understood this profound force and regarded color as a sacred language, weaving its symbolism into the fabric of their cities and temples. And here's where things get really interesting, folks. Architecture, often called the crystallized music by great thinkers like Goethe, is also influenced by these vibrational principles. The sacred constructions created by priests were designed with such mastery that they became powerful sound instruments. With just a whisper, these structures would create a resonance that filled every corner of the space. Mind blown, right? But the interplay between the visible and the invisible doesn't stop there. Every element in nature has its own unique note, just like each individual has their own. Ancient myths, such as the one about Jericho's walls tumbling down to the sound of the Israelite trumpets, symbolize this hidden knowledge of individual vibratory tones. The ancient Greeks, always on point, illustrate this understanding through the Pythagorean Tetractus, where the white light encompasses all colors and sounds within its potential. From this emanate the existence of everything, forming a dance of seven lights that divide into three and four representing the higher heavens and the lower irrational sphere. Now, get ready for a mind-blowing fact. The order of colors and musical notes doesn't just shape the artistic and aesthetic foundation, but the entire cosmic structure itself. Just like there's a spectrum that our eyes can't perceive, there are sounds that our ears can't grasp and flavors that our taste buds can't detect. We are surrounded by a super-sensitive universe that can only be felt by those whose centers of perception have been sufficiently developed. 
In front of us, there's a diagram of intertwined triangles, one representing fire and the other representing earth. This diagram explains how these elements do not mix but maintain specific harmonies between them, just like in musical and chromatic scales. These harmonies, linked to the zodiac, vary according to the chromatic wheel and astrological positions. Each zodiac sign reflects its unique coloration. It's like a cosmic symphony, my friends, and we're just here soaking in all the beauty. This is just a glimpse into the immense wisdom found in O Conocimiento Secreto de Todas as Eras. Can you believe the world is filled with such incredible knowledge? Stay tuned for the next segment, where we explore even deeper into the esoteric realms of color, symbolism, and magic. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Thank you for joining me today, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to never miss another mind-blowing book summary. Until next time, keep exploring the secrets of the universe, my fellow truth seekers. In Freemasonry, the beehive serves as a reminder that true happiness and prosperity can be found in diligence and labor for the common good. Bees, these diligent little creatures, symbolize wisdom as they tirelessly work to extract pollen, just as humans can gather wisdom from everyday life experiences. These creatures, considered sacred to the goddess Venus, are believed by mystics to have originated on the planet Venus millions of years ago, making it difficult to trace their origins on Earth. Bees, essential in pollinating flowers, also symbolize generative strength. In France, bees became a symbol of their kings, who adorned their garments with the image of these insects and enthroned themselves under canopies decorated with gigantic figures of bees. And finally, the intriguing symbolism of the fly, often seen as a tormentor due to the irritation it causes animals. Baalzebub, or Beelzebub, evolved from Baalzebul, a deity associated with a heavenly dwelling. The name suggested the image of a fly, as flies have the ability to eliminate decomposing substances, promoting health. The Jews, interpreting this deity satirically, transformed Beelzebub into the prince of demons, replacing the original reverence with a derogatory association. We conclude with a touch of historical curiosity. The famous poet Virgil was accused of witchcraft for creating a bronze fly amulet for the city of Naples, which supposedly kept insects away for over eight years. This passage allows us to understand how ancient knowledge secreted a worldview where everything is interconnected, and the sacred manifests in ways that defy our rational understanding. The symbolism of these beings reminds us that in ancient times, magic and science were not seen as separate areas, but as two aspects of the same universal knowledge, an intricate fabric of meanings and powers that composed reality. In this intriguing and symbol-rich passage, we delve into the ancient veneration that links reptiles, especially the serpent, to a surprising range of mystical and spiritual meanings. The serpent, elevated to a position of wisdom and salvation, intertwines with the history of civilizations, from the serpent mountains of Native Americans to the intertwined serpents in Egyptian temples. The symbolism of the serpent is deeply rooted as an emblem of immortality and renewal due to its ability to shed its skin, symbolizing reincarnation. In some cultures, it is even believed that serpents would be eternal if not for violence. This enigmatic serpent also has a connection to the creation and destruction of the universe, symbolizing the universal force inherent in both good and evil, shaping the world and its mysteries. Interestingly, the serpent is also linked to the mysteries of medicine, represented in the intertwined rod of Hermes, still an iconic symbol of the medical profession today. The serpent, therefore, is not just a symbol of evil, as often interpreted in Christian contexts, but a complex figure representing wisdom, salvation, and the dual nature of existence. Reptiles such as crocodiles and turtles are not exempt from this rich symbolic fabric. Each has its own meaning, sometimes sacred, and maintainers of wisdom, sometimes precursors of longevity and stability, as is the case with turtles that carry the weight of the universe. Furthermore, the connection with stars and the cosmos is present when hybrid creatures such as the centaur or the bullman are mentioned. Symbolic representations of constellations and celestial beings that guard the secrets of the universe. In the end, we transition into the next topic of the book, where we explore feathered creatures, birds, agents of the sky, messengers between the divine and the earthly. 
We eagerly await what these symbols of aspiration and purity have to reveal to us on our continued journey through the occult knowledge of the ages. In this immersive section of the book, The Secret Knowledge of All Eras, we delve into the ancient symbolism rooted in the foundation of the United States through its iconic Great Eagle of the U.S. Seal, which in its origins resembled the mythical phoenix. The original design of the seal featured a bird with distinct characteristics reminiscent of the phoenix, a mythological bird associated with renewal and rebirth, suggesting the rise of a new nation from the ashes of old Europe, a vision shared by many of the country's founders. The symbolism of the number 13 across various facets of the seal reinforces not only the memory of the 13 original colonies, but also alludes to the esoteric significance of the number. Stars in the shape of thirteen points, branches and arrows numbering thirteen, and phrases with thirteen letters all invoke a union of purposes and mystical potential embedded in the heart of the nation. Deeply intertwined with Masonic and occult principles, the seal invokes allusions to the incomplete pyramid and the all-seeing eye, robust symbols that align with the intentions of the Masonic founders of the United States who were inspired and assisted by a European secret society to establish spiritual goals and ideals still hidden from the general public. Simultaneously, we explore other sacred animal symbols spanning a wide range of ancient cultures. The lion as the king of animals and a solar symbol, the cat revered by the ancient Egyptian civilization as a mediator of magnetic forces, and the apis, the sacred bull, representing the physical divine nature and a symbol of creative solar power, all demonstrate the rich tapestry of meanings attributed to animals and their relationship with the divine and the cosmos. In conclusion, ancient symbolic animals such as the Egyptian apis bull, the lamb, and the goat are integral to the symbolic panorama, acting as emblems of powerful concepts such as alchemical transmutation, spiritual purity, and human aspiration. The drone of the apis is a symbolic act reflecting the process of transition and spiritual elevation, where after death, life is eternally reborn with humanity's relentless pursuit of truth and spiritual enlightenment. This journey through the U.S. seal and its connection to animal symbols in diverse cultures reveals not only the foundational symbolic heritage of a nation, but also the universal tapestry of human quest for higher knowledge and understanding of the soul's journey. In the heart of mystical forests and ancient temples, animals hold symbolism that resonates with the wisdom of ages. Let's take a look at the deer, dressed in sacredness in the mysteries of Bacchus in ancient Greece. Its skin symbolizing aesthetic abandon, and its figure worshipped alongside the moon goddess. In Japan, herds of these graceful beings still find a sacred home near temples. The force of nature represents both good and evil, and that is captured in the image of the wolf especially in the myth of the Fenris wolf from Scandinavia. Its presence embodies chaos and destruction, capable of consuming even Odin, the father of all gods, suggesting a triumph of uncontrolled natural forces over the order created by gods. The unicorn. Ah, the unicorn. This creature that combines features of various animals and is adorned with a single mystical horn. Although its real existence is questioned, its symbolic power is undeniable. It is an allegory of spiritual life, with its horn representing the pineal gland, the eye of spiritual cognition in man. In Hermeticism and esoteric teachings, the unicorn is the protector of spiritual doctrine, and its presence is a sign of the initiate's enlightenment. Moving through the symbolic bestiary, we encounter the diabolical Egyptian Typhon, with representations ranging from hyenas to hippos, but always rooted in evil and the protection of the dead against profanations. Even the donkey, on which Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, carries layers of representation, both in the defeat of iniquity and the elevation of the sacred. The animal world extends to the monkey, symbolizing humanity in its primitive irrational state. Cenocephalus, the ape-headed dog, is linked to Thoth and symbolizes writing and wisdom. In this rich tapestry of ancient wisdom, we unravel the sacred zoo of Greco-Roman, American, and Egyptian civilizations, where each winged creature holds profound meaning. The eagle rises to the position of carrier of Jupiter's divine swiftness, the great demiurge, and reveals itself as the sovereign of material heavens and zodiacal periods, especially under the sign of Scorpio, 
where its fiery nature evokes the spiritual fire that transcends matter. Looking further, we find the Thunderbird, revered by certain Native American tribes, manifesting the voice of the heavens and paving the way for the human spirit to soar above the shackles of mortality. In Egypt, royal birds with splendid plumage and penetrating gazes served as sentinels of the sun and messengers of gods like Ra, Osiris, and Horus. In contrast, the figure of the rooster appears as a guardian of mystery and symbol of vigilance and defense. The peacock and the ibis, vanquishers of venomous serpents, advance as guardians of life, adorned with the wisdom of the stars and imbued with the mystery of immortality. Here the flesh of the peacock refuses corruption, like an eternal testament to the human soul that defies decay. The ibis, consecrated to Thoth, takes flight into a sacred melody, embodying purity and preservation, while nocturnal birds like owls and bats dance in the shadows, swaying between hidden wisdom and the nameless mysteries of magic. The narrative continues through creatures that remind us of the constant cycle of life and death, such as the vulture and the condor, custodians of the world, revealing hidden beauty in the decomposition that gives birth to new life. The parrot and the raven, speakers of human tongues, inhabit the borderline between the realms of speech and silence. The dove, however, ascends as the purest symbol of the Holy Spirit, representing divine order and wisdom, and embodies the power behind the creation of the world. This same bird, once an emblem of pagan deities of love and fertility, now vibrates with the essence of maternal love and spiritual truth radiance. Finally, the mysterious phoenix, eternal creature of alchemy and rebirth, joins the celestial tapestry, urging us to transcend time and matter. Once upon a time there was a creature that died in aromatic flames only to be born again from the ashes, celebrating the eternal cycle of death and rebirth. It carries the virtues of transformation, spiritual rebirth, and symbolizes the mystical core of initiation, where every being, like the phoenix, can rise from the ashes of their physical existence to a renewed life in spirituality. Thus, the threads that once seemed like scattered tales intertwine, revealing a celestial constellation where each star is a bird with its own keys to the portals of eternal knowledge. In this segment of the book, The Secret Knowledge of All Ages, we dive into a world where nature is not just a passive backdrop, but an open book of esoteric symbols and meanings waiting to be deciphered. The flora, admired not just for its beauty or usefulness, is elevated to a sacred realm where every aspect, from the color of a petal to the shape of a root, carries a message for those who know how to interpret it. We begin by exploring the relationship between plants and health. Our ancestors saw plants as a bridge between the physical and the spiritual, using prophetic herbs and remedies. They believed that the physical resemblance between parts of a plant and the human body indicated their therapeutic potential. For example, a plant with a root resembling a tooth was used to cure toothaches. This ancient approach connected visual similarity with healing power, a fascinating concept that modernity has nearly forgotten. But the symbolic richness of plants extends beyond bodily healing. The flower, representing a plant's reproductive system, became a symbol of sexual purity, a priceless value in ancient mysteries. The lotus of the east and the rose of the Rosicrucians hold prominent positions in this symbolic mosaic representing interchangeable mysteries of creative motherhood. While the lily is associated with the phallic, the lotus and the rose represent the feminine, the yonic. In the wisdom passed down by ancient initiates, we encounter a revolutionary concept, chakras. Described as swirling vortices of spiritual energy along the spinal column, these chakras correspond to specific neural complexes. The spiritual awakening of an individual can be symbolized by the sprouting of Aaron's rod or, in art, by flowers blossoming on the sacred staff of the mysteries, representing the spinal column itself. Symbolism does not limit itself to the plant kingdom. It extends to majestic beings of the forest, trees that rise as pillars of the sky. The cultus arborum, or cult of trees, saw them as representations of divinity. Sacred buildings emerged amidst these sacred woods, their branches offering protection and their imposing presence being associated with strength and integrity. Ancient peoples like the Hindus and the Scandinavians went even further, envisioning the macrocosm or the vast universe as a cosmic tree 
whose growth mirrored the expansion of the cosmos from a spiritual seed. The Tree of Life, so present in mystical narratives, embraces multiple meanings, from representing the universe and its countless branches of existence to symbolically embodying human growth from the dark sludge of ignorance into spiritual enlightenment. Trees, therefore, were not merely plants, but living emblems of the soul's journey. Finally, the role of trees is emphasized in sacred architecture and art, with temple columns adorned with lotus-inspired shapes, expressing timeless wisdom. It is even suggested that the famous cedars of Lebanon, used in the construction of Solomon's temple, may have been a metaphor for enlightened sages and initiates of mystical wisdom. This vast symbolic panorama demonstrates that within every leaf, flower, or root resides a story that speaks of our spiritual past and the search for understanding that transcends the ages. As we delve deeper into the forest of ancient symbolism, where trees rise as emblematic totems of forgotten wisdom, we encounter the oak, the pine, the ash, the cypress, and the palm, each carrying distinct meanings and serving specific purposes in ancient rituals and cults. Let's not forget the fir and the cedar, trees whose connections with divinities traverse time and continents. The acacia, or tamarisk, sacred to the Egyptians and Jews and still revered in masonry, symbolized the tenacity of life. Its branches, representing immortality, purity, and regeneration, are carried in the hands of those who venture into the mysterious passages of sacred initiations. This symbolic domain embraces an extensive vegetation of meanings, from lettuce in the Adonis mysteries, the lotus in Egyptian and Brahmanic celebrations, mistletoe with the Druids, to myrtle in Greek festivities. We then arrive at the story of Kiram Abif, central in Freemasonry and echoing the Egyptian myth of Osiris. Both Kiram and Osiris are symbolized by the acacia or tamarisk, and their life, death, and resurrection narratives intertwine with immortality. The pomegranate stands as a mystical symbol of promise and the confinement of essential life, while ancient cultures saw wine as a parallel to human blood, a drink that intoxicates and unleashes primal instincts. We conclude our journey through this segment with the mandrake, a plant with almost human-like powers and deeply magical. Feared and revered, this plant man is a guardian at the border between two realms, and according to ancient beliefs, its roots would scream with a human voice when torn from the earth. Thus, through the mandrake and other sacred plants, we perceive how nature is woven into the fabric of ancient spirituality. Each plant, with its peculiar symbolism, offers a key to understanding how our ancestors saw the world and its connection to the divine. As we explore these ancient symbols, we remember that every leaf and root are fragments of a universal language waiting for those willing to hear their forgotten stories. The magic and mysticism of plants, stones, and metals come together in the intricate tapestry of medieval wisdom that I am unraveling for you today. Let's dive headfirst into the powerful and symbolic relationship between nature and the esoteric, so revered by our ancestors. First up is the mandrake, a plant rooted in myths and legends, with its almost human-like appearance manipulated to resemble even more human figures. These humanized mandrakes were highly valued, believed to possess supernatural powers. Not only were they thought to have narcotic properties, but they were also involved in magical practices, being fundamental ingredients in love potions. Their connection to the origin of human beings was also speculated upon, suggesting a metaphor for the emergence of earthly life from primordial clay. On the other hand, the onion, an object of devotion in ancient Egypt, symbolized the universe due to its concentric structure, echoing the layers of creation. To this day, the onion and garlic hold reputations as powerful magical tools capable of treating diverse conditions such as obsessions and vampirism. According to ancient wisdom, garlic could even protect an entire house from malevolent forces. Trifoliate plants, like clover, especially those with a fourth leaf, were seen as sacred, this fourth leaf held even more significance, symbolizing the redemption of humanity, thus joining the principle of the Trinity. Moving from botany to alchemy, we encounter the image of the alchemical tree. Alchemists portrayed metals as branches sprouting from a single trunk, illustrating a unique solar life that nourishes all forms of the universe. Just as the first humans emerged from the earth, 
Metals and minerals are born and grow under the natural influence of elements, within the heart of the earth, analogous to plants in the field. And from the shadows of alchemy to stones, whose study takes us back to the spiritual realm, rocks and earth correspond to the bones and flesh of the planet, with each stone being an emblem of the eternal spirit. For the initiated, the image of a skeleton with a scythe represents the deity Saturn and the spiritual nature that sustains all creation. The primitive worship of stones reveals a profound respect, turning them into monuments, testimonies to the existence of ancient, extinct peoples. Have you ever wondered why certain symbols appear in the oldest stories and mythologies of humanity, such as the Holy Grail? Well, let's dive deep into this mystery, where the Grail is more than just an object. It is the emblem of our inner world and the nature of the human being. Considered a vessel, it symbolizes the capacity to contain the living essence of the higher worlds, acting as a bridge between the divine and the mortal. In this segment, we explore ancient symbolic concepts that connect mythology, philosophy, and esoteric traditions. Let's start with the impressive image of Saturn swallowing a stone believed to be his son Jupiter, a maneuver by his wife Rhea to save the child. This stone, later revered in Delphi, symbolizes eternity, the immutability of truth and divinity, a recurring theme in esotericism. The Greeks, the Brahmins, and the Egyptians recognized the earth as a spherical body, but when referring to it as an element, they spoke of its four corners, a concept that anchors the constancy of natural and divine laws. This depiction of earth, supported by both literal and philosophical pillars, connects us to how the ancients perceived reality as being sustained by immutable principles. The Philosopher's Stone, common in cultural alchemies, is actually a symbol of philosophical knowledge, wisdom that transmutes ignorance into enlightenment, a powerful parallel to the story of the stone that Jupiter saves, which is then transformed into an object of veneration and representation of divine truth. We then move on to the tablets of the law given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Produced from divine sapphire, the laws were written with luminous letters, reflecting a celestial truth directly from divinity. However, due to the idolatry of the Israelites, Moses destroyed these tablets, replacing them with more rustic stone tablets with older letters, a symbolic gesture representing the distancing from divine wisdom in favor of worldly knowledge. These themes about the duality of existence deepen with the symbolism of the two pillars of Solomon's temple, Jachin and Boaz, representing light and darkness, masculine and feminine, active and passive. The initiates would understand all these dualities as fundamental to the structure of creation and the path to enlightenment. Finally, the narrative traverses the history of the Holy Grail, linking it to the fall of Lucifer. The Grail became the symbol of the eternal quest for truth rooted in pagan and Christian traditions and connected to the mysteries of life generation and the mysteries of the Great Mother Nature. Therefore, this segment brings together a rich tapestry of symbolic correspondences that connect ancient traditions to a deep understanding of the spiritual and material world and the divine mysteries that govern our pursuit of knowledge and understanding of the cosmos. Every time we touch an ancient object or admire a shimmering jewel, we are face to face with living history, stories of great feats and hidden wisdom that span centuries. These symbols and objects are like mirrors reflecting divinity, teaching us about the cosmos and our own essence. In the universe of arcane knowledge, matter and spirit dance in eternal harmony, revealing the mysteries presented to our curiosity. The crystal ball, often misunderstood and misused, actually holds a profound and triple symbolism. It represents the crystalline universal egg, in which all creation is reflected in its clear depths. It is also a symbol of the deity before its association with matter, and additionally, the crystal ball symbolizes the ethereal sphere of the world where the perfect image of all earthly activities is eternally preserved. In the skies, meteors were seen as gifts from the gods and were kept as signs of a divine agreement with the community where they fell. Natural stones marked by unique aspects were also found and venerated, such as in China, where a marble slab displays the perfect image of a Chinese dragon. Highly respected and influential symbolism, even today, among those devoted to religiosity.
Now let's enter the universe of ceremonial magic and witchcraft. Ceremonial magic is an ancient art that invokes and controls spirits through the scientific application of specific formulas. A mage, with their sacred garments and a wand adorned with hieroglyphs, possess the power to influence the invisible inhabitants of the elements and the astral world. Although this practice was complex and extensive in ancient times, its perversion gave rise to various schools of sorcery and black magic. Egypt, a center of knowledge and the birthplace of many arts and sciences, allowed for transcendental experimentation. Black magicians from Atlantis continued to exert their superhuman powers until they completely corrupted the primitive values of the mysteries. With the establishment of a priestly caste, they used religion to paralyze intellectual and spiritual activities, forcing unconditional submission to the dogmas imposed by the dominant religious caste. The hieroglyphs and rituals were altered, and idolatry was introduced, deceiving their devotees with false interpretations. Superstition prevailed, turning humanity into slaves of these spiritual impostors. Many medieval Kabbalists, convinced that their scriptures supported the practice, dedicated their lives to ceremonial magic. This transcendental magic was based on the magical formula of Solomon, considered by Jews to be the prince of ceremonial magicians. However, among the Kabbalists, there were black magicians who deviated from noble concepts and became entangled in demons and witchcraft, attempting to achieve supernatural powers through magical mirrors or consecrated daggers, distancing themselves from the virtuous life that brings, without any assistance, a person to a state of individual fulfillment. The practice of white or black magic depends on the control of the universal life force, symbolized by the famous Mendez goat in ancient times. This hermaphroditic creature served as a symbol of astral light, controlled to produce phenomena of transcendentalism. Magicians often got lost or perished while opening pathways that allowed submundane creatures to interact in their affairs. The life and magical practices of Dr. Johannes Faustus, Dr. Faust, are a testimony to this. Experienced in magical writings, he managed to bind an elemental to his service, but eventually, like many before him, met a disastrous end. While the demonic image of the Middle Ages seems to have dissipated, the practices of black magic have undergone a metamorphosis and continue to exist in modern ideologies. Under disguised forms of prosperity psychology, high-pressure sales techniques, and others, the old artifice of black magic remains alive, causing the same eternal dangers to those who surrender to selfishness and the gratification of personal desires. In the dark and mysterious world of the occult arts, where power and danger dance on the edge of the abyss, making a pact with the supernatural is a game of the highest risk. Here, we are introduced to the mage who makes a daring pact with an entity called Astaroth, delving into the search for spiritual servants capable of fulfilling his desires and needs with surprising agility. Only Asiel, the spirit as swift as human thought, satisfies his demands and becomes his faithful servant. The text reveals a catalog of spirits, each with their own abilities and particular demands. We have Asiel, the master of speed and wealth, Anigel, the discoverer of treasures, Marbuel, the enigmatic lord and protector of the secret of the spring root, a plant capable of unlocking what is sealed, Asiabel, the ruler of the deep sea, Machiel, the lady who elevates her master to honors, and Baruel, the sovereign of arts and knowledge. To master these beings and ensure that their invocations are successful, the mage must follow a meticulous ritual, drawing specific signs, preparing protective circles, and performing summonings at appropriate times and days. It's a magical dance between powerful symbols, such as consecrated swords and pentagrams, and invocation phrases. This complex process implies creating bonds with beings from another world, an endeavor that must be done with precision and absolute respect for established rules. Hey there, fellow book lovers. Welcome back to my channel, where we dive into the fascinating world of literature and dissect its hidden treasures. Today we have a real gem for you. Have you ever wondered about the secrets that lie beyond the veil of our understanding? Well, get ready, because in this segment we'll be exploring the spellbinding book O Conocimiento Secreto de Todas as Eras. In this mesmerizing journey, we are introduced to a world where magic, darkness, and forbidden knowledge intertwine. 
Our protagonist, a daring magician, delves into the practice of summoning spirits and making pacts with the supernatural. But as he soon discovers, this path is not as easy as it seems. A warning resonates throughout the book. The power derived from these dark alliances can be insidious. Our fearless magician's confidence in controlling the summoned entities quickly wanes as he navigates the treacherous pitfalls of this perilous journey. Desperation sets in as he fights to stay alive and avoid becoming a servant to his own demonic creation. Death lurks just around the corner, and in his terror he resorts to the horror of becoming a hidden vampire, sucking the life force of others to prolong his unfortunate existence on earth. But there's more to this story than just spooky creatures and nefarious packs. We are also introduced to the Modo di Operación para Invocación de Espíritos, a manual that details the prayers and rituals necessary to summon and control beings from the otherworldly realm. These rituals are like a theatrical performance, where every word and gesture carries the weight of centuries of esoteric knowledge. As we venture deeper into the occult knowledge, we are confronted with the eternal duel between power and damnation. The fine line that separates human ambition and its potential for destruction becomes increasingly blurry. Only the brave, or perhaps the foolish, dare to touch that veil which separates our world from the realm of shadows. The dialogue between practitioner and spiritual entity in the ceremonial magic is a rigorous dance of questions, answers, and promises. The practitioner seeks to increase their knowledge and abilities in the liberal and magical arts, demanding loyalty from the spirit. In return, the invoker promises to fulfill their part of the agreement with reverence and courtesy. This carefully orchestrated procedure involves symbols, pentagrams, and pacts, with the pentagram itself being the key to unlocking hidden powers and obtaining the ultimate knowledge of white magic. When the spirit offers its answers and the invoker completes their request, a license to depart is given, thanking the entity humbly for its answers and allowing it to return in peace. This ritualistic exchange contrasts sharply with the power struggle and inversion of authority that characterizes black magic. In this realm, it is not the demon who submits to the magician, but rather the other way around. The pact in black magic is sealed with the magician's own blood, igniting an insolent battle. The entity, with its multiple tricks, tries everything to prevent the magician from fulfilling their part of the agreement. If the magician fails, their soul will be claimed by the elemental. The narrative of these practices leads us to contemplate the symbolism of the pentagram. When used in black magic, it is distorted and perverted, giving way to sinister intentions behind the sign of the cloven hoof, also known as the devil's footprint or the goat of Mendez. This expansion of esoteric knowledge brings us into contact with pneumatology, the study of spiritual substances popularized by the renowned Paracelsus. He proposed the existence of elementals, ethereal creatures residing in the invisible and spiritual substrates of the classical four elements, earth, fire, air, and water. Paracelsus not only illustrated the physical details of these beings, but also outlined their influence on the visible world. Ancient beliefs associated the sea, forests, rivers, and fire with these elemental beings, intertwining their worship with the adoration of pagan deities. This section encourages us to deepen our understanding of the relationship between the practitioner and the supernatural, and how it intertwines with the comprehension of the world itself. Through the summoning of spirits and the formulation of pacts, we glimpse the delicate balance between power, knowledge, the sacred, and the profane. It echoes the duality of the elements and the human soul, which seeks to expand its horizons beyond the tangible through the occult. Magic and mystery dance through literature and the traditions of various cultures, breathing life into enchanted beings that dwell on the edges of our understanding. From Shakespeare's mischievous puck to the flickering light of Barry's Tinkerbell, we step through a portal into a universe where nature spirits frolic and interact with the tangible. But let's dive deeper into the heart of this book. Who are these ethereal spirits that inhabit the pages of O Conhecimento Secreto de Todas as Eras? Paracelsus, a renowned figure in the esoteric world, offers us a detailed explanation. He separates human flesh, the familiar territory we occupy as descendants of Adam, 
from another type of flesh, which is more refined and not subject to human limitations. These ethereal beings, known as elementals, exist in an intermediate state between spirit and matter. Imagine something that is neither spirit nor matter as we understand it, but residing in an in-between point. These elementals are beings with blood, bones, and flesh, beings that reproduce and live lives that are almost recognizable, if not for their exceptional speed and extended lifespans. They are confined to a specific realm, inexorably linked to one of the natural elements, water, air, earth, and fire. Each element has its distinct ethereal realm, housing a different family of nature spirits. These elementals cannot be destroyed by conventional physical means because they vibrate on a higher frequency. For them, death simply means a return to the element from which they emerged, without preserving an individual consciousness beyond life. The gnomes, who dwell in the earthly ether, are just one of the elemental families described by Paracelsus. They exhibit a wide range of functions, from caring for gemstones deep within the earth to living amongst plants, each acting in accordance with its corresponding nature. They build homes made of a mysterious substance resembling alabaster, marble, and cement, a substance not found in our tangible world. While lacking the spiritual complexity of angels and archangels, these creatures share this terrestrial universe with us in unimaginable ways. They harmoniously interact within a cosmic order and possess their own kings and conventions of society. However, be warned, not all gnomes are friendly, and their malleable temperament can turn against us with unfavorable consequences when betrayed. Following ancient traditions, these nature spirits receive us with reverence, dwelling in the four cardinal directions. The gnomes represent the north, symbolizing earth, darkness, and melancholic introspection. As we navigate the density of our material world, the gnomes and their elemental counterparts dance in their ethereal lightness, touching the earth with hands that shape nature, invisible to the human eye, yet infinitely present in the grand tapestry of existence. In this enthralling segment, we dive into the enchanting realm of gnomes, those creatures that populate fairy tales and our collective imagination. Here, they are portrayed with a touch of magical realism, depicted with very human-like characteristics. These beings form families and are known for their clothes made of the elements they dwell in, or even by clothes that grow with them, similar to animal fur. Gnomes have a reputation for being diligent workers, but they are also infamous for their insatiable appetite. This seemingly contradictory trait turns their daily lives into an endless search for food obtained through meticulous and hard work. Among the various types of gnomes, we encounter the brownie or elf, small mischievous beings standing at around 30 to 45 centimeters tall, often dressed in green or brown. True to their name, gnomes often appear as robust and elderly figures, sporting long white beards. It is not uncommon to spot them emerging from or disappearing into tree trunks, which they often call home. A fascinating observation is that young children tend to have a higher frequency of sighting gnomes compared to adults, perhaps due to their more fluid and unobstructed connection to the invisible and natural world. Paracelsus, a Swiss philosopher, offers an interesting perspective on gnomes. He suggests that while humans reside in the external elements, elementals like gnomes reside in the internal elements. According to him, they have their own homes, clothing, customs, languages, and forms of government, all as organized as human societies. However, Paracelsus's views are not universally accepted. While he proposes that gnomes are made of invisible and subtle ethers, visible only under specific conditions and to individuals attuned to their ethereal vibrations, the Greeks believed that many of these creatures had physical bodies capable of operating in the physical world. To add a final touch to these descriptions, let's explore the intriguing story recounted by St. Jerome about a satyr captured alive and displayed to the public during the reign of Constantine. This creature had a human form with horns and goat feet, and after its death it was preserved in salt and presented to the emperor. Stories like these blur the line between myth and a possible reality distorted through the lenses of superstition and monster tales. As we immerse ourselves in these narratives, we confront the complexity of discerning between physical and ethereal visions, considering the differing opinions on the materiality 
of these mythical beings. We find ourselves questioning how far our perceptions can truly lead us in understanding these hidden worlds and their elemental creatures. Now we take a plunge into the magical realm of water elementals, the undines. Graceful and symmetrical, these spirits inhabit our waters, controlling the flow and function of the water element in nature. They frequently symbolize feminine figures, as water itself is associated with femininity. Grouped into various families, undines find their homes in waterfalls, rivers, swamps, and mountain lakes, bringing with them stories and legends of interactions with humans before eventually returning to their aquatic origins. When we gaze upon these enchanting creatures, there is much we do not yet know about their male counterparts, the male undines, who are more mysterious and reside in coral caves or among the reeds. Celtic legends even speak of a semi-divine race that inhabited Ireland long before its current inhabitants, retreating to the watery lands when modern humans arrived. In their captivating splendor, undines resemble Greek goddesses, emerging from the water and shrouded in mist. Fascinating, isn't it? These elemental beings, from gnomes to undines, reveal a hidden side of our world, one that dances on the boundaries of our understanding. Through Paracelsus's insights and the rich tales woven throughout the book, we grasp a glimpse of the intertwined relationship between humanity and the supernatural. We question our own perception and how it shapes our comprehension of these hidden realms. These elemental creatures, with their ethereal existence, open our minds to the infinite possibilities that lie just beyond our grasp. That's it for this segment, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this exploration into the secrets revealed in O Conhecimento Secreto de Todas as Eras. Stay tuned for the next part, where we'll unmask more enchanting mysteries hidden within the pages of this captivating book. Hit that like button and smash that subscribe bell to join our book-loving community. Until next time, keep reading and stay curious. Imagine diving into the mystical universe of elementals and the hermetic vision of medicine. In this segment of The Secret Knowledge of All Ages, we explore the fascinating concept that each fixed sign of the zodiac is connected to an elemental realm. Taurus is linked to the earth-dwelling gnomes, Scorpio to the elusive undines of the water, Leo to the fiery salamanders dancing with flames, and Aquarius to the ethereal sylphs manipulating the ethers and gases. Now the church has cast a shadow over these entities, labeling them all as demons, a grave mistake. Unlike demons, elementals are not inherently malevolent. They are simply a part of nature, just like plants and animals. There is an interesting debate about the mortality of elementals. Unlike humans, it is believed that they do not possess immortality, except in rare cases where initiated individuals have granted them such a gift. While their intelligence is highly advanced within their element, it falls short of human rationality. But here's where it gets intriguing. Entities like incubi and succubi, often confused with elementals, are actually parasitic creations that feed on impure thoughts and emotions. They seek out human vices and are drawn to degrading environments. The text draws a clear line between innocent elementals and malicious creatures like vampires, incubi, and succubi. Vampires are astral bodies that steal life energy to survive whereas incubi and succubi are born from imagination and base instincts. Moving on, we explore the revolutionary concept of immaculate conception, representing the union of humans and elementals. Legendary figures like Hercules and Merlin are mentioned as the offspring of these unions. Shifting gears to the realm of hermetic pharmacology, the text states that the art of healing was originally one of the sacred knowledges of priests, steeped in the mysteries of religious beliefs. It was a knowledge preserved by the clergy and shared only with the worthy. The summary touches on the medical system of Paracelsus, a 16th century physician and alchemist who championed the unity of philosophy, science, and religion as essential for a complete understanding of the universe and its mysteries. According to him, diseases have their origins in the invisible nature of man, and medicine should be an ally, not an enemy, of nature. True wisdom emerges from the harmonization of three fields, philosophy, science, and religion. This synthesis reveals how ancient philosophers and thinkers viewed the natural world around us, not as a series of impersonal processes, 
but as a complex tapestry of entities and personalities that weave and shape our seemingly chaotic universe. It is within this intricate interplay of subtle forces that we find the harmony and beauty of existence. Deeply immersed in the current of hermetic wisdom, where alchemy and esotericism merge to unlock the secrets of the universe, we come to the heart of the secret knowledge of all ages. Here, we encounter the fundamental concept of the Archaeus, the life force that connects matter and spirit, sustaining all forms of life and manifestation. This Archaeus originates from the Earth's spiritual body, with each being possessing not just a tangible physical form, but also an ethereal counterpart, a vital and translucent body that survives even after death. Those ethereal shadows seen around cemeteries are often mistaken for ghosts, but they are mere reflections of a subtler reality. The ancients understood that imbalances in this ethereal body could lead to physical illnesses. Paracelsus, a prominent alchemist, taught that negative mental attitudes could poison this ethereal nature. This knowledge led to the search for cures that could restore balance, utilizing external elements such as plants and minerals, which also possess their own archaeus. It was understood that the healing properties of talismans and amulets came from their ability to channel this universal life force, also known as mumia, a term coined by Paracelsus to define the vehicle of life force. From a hermetic perspective, health and illness are not merely physical matters. Seven primary causes were identified for diseases, including malevolent spirits, imbalance between the spiritual and the material, degrading mental attitudes, the law of karma, celestial movements, misuse of organs or bodily functions, and the presence of foreign substances in the body. Correspondingly, seven methods were outlined to combat or prevent afflictions, including enchantments, balanced use of physical abilities, and elimination of external impurities, among others. In history, von Helmont, a Belgian alchemist from the 17th century, stood out for describing peculiar experiences with plants that could alter consciousness and temporarily revive a paralyzed function of the cerebrospinal nervous system. This led to increased activity in the sympathetic nervous system and the solar plexus, shedding light on the complex energetic systems that compose the human being. This holistic view of alchemical medicine suggests a cosmic tapestry where every visible and invisible element is an integral part, influencing the health and well-being of the whole. Understanding this interconnectedness transforms knowledge into wisdom, one of the primary goals of hermetic alchemy, and this unique journey through the hidden knowledge of the ages. Now let's travel back in time to an era when the art of healing was not just science, but also magic and mystery. We embark on an exploration of seven ancient healing methods, as described in The Secret Knowledge of All Ages, which reveal an epoch where the body and the cosmos were intrinsically intertwined. First, we delve into sound healing. Sounds, chants, sacred names, and music were used to restore harmony in the ailing body. Color also played a role, with exposure to different hues influencing the patient's well-being foreshadowing what we now recognize as color therapy. The second method associates talismans and amulets with planets and human health. Aligned with astronomy, the ancients created talismans from specific metals to attract or repel planetary influences in order to rebalance the body. For example, an iron deficiency related to Mars could be treated with a talisman that carried the energy of that planet to the patient. The third method relied on the use of simple herbs and plants. Instead of mineral-based medicines, ancient physicians prescribed herbs associated with specific planets, acting as antidotes to diseases diagnosed by astral influences. Moving on to the fourth path, we encounter healing through faith and prayer, with the belief in divine intervention to alleviate human suffering. However, as Paracelsus pointed out, faith, being a potent remedy, was rare and few possessed the necessary faith for it to be effective. The fifth method prioritizes prevention over curing. Ancient wisdom understood that health was the natural state, and disease resulted from neglecting the laws of nature. Thus, regulating diet and daily habits were crucial for maintaining well-being. As the sixth method, medical practice involved bleeding, purging, and other treatments that, while useful, could be dangerous in excess and prematurely lead many to their graves. The work also mentions Nicholas Culpeper 
a physician and herbalist renowned for his approach to healing through herbs and their correlation with astrology. According to him, each herb fell under the jurisdiction of a planet or celestial body and could cure diseases related to it. Taking a broader look, the ancients regarded herbs with spiritual reverence, seeing them as gifts from the gods for healing and evolution. It's no wonder that the effectiveness of certain ancient herbal remedies remains an enigma to this day. Finally, we touch upon the rituals and secrets of the initiatory orders, where ointments and potions were prepared with ceremonies that amplified their healing power. Here we also touch on the ability to induce altered states of consciousness through herbs, which was an integral part of mystic initiations. Each piece of this narrative unveils a fragment of the vast and sophisticated knowledge that the ancients possessed about the human body and its connections to the universe. Though this knowledge has survived in fragments, its essence continues to captivate our curiosity and fascination for the wisdom of a time when science and the sacred danced hand in hand. At the core of it all, the visible universe is just a fraction of the complete reality, and the ancient philosophies reflect this truth through the complexity of human constitution, extending beyond the physical body. Modern doctors often focused on treating symptoms frequently overlook the intriguing higher layers of being, something that Paracelsus with his critical eye did not miss. He distinguished between magic that addresses the invisible causes of diseases and the mere manipulation of external effects, which can easily be mistaken for charlatanism. Hey there, my book-loving friends. Have you ever wondered about the secrets of ancient civilizations? Well, today I have a mind-blowing book for you that will take you on a journey through centuries of hidden knowledge. Get ready to uncover the secret knowledge of all ages. In this segment, we dive into the fascinating world of alternative medicine and ancient healing practices. Hold on tight because we're about to discover that illness is not just a natural occurrence, but actually a sign of imbalance within our bodies. The key to long-lasting health lies in restoring this harmony. In the mystical realm of hermetic medicine, spiritual and psychophysical disturbances were recognized as central factors in the development of physical ailments. Ancient priest doctors would perform healings using suggestion-based therapies and other spiritual methods. Imagine ancient American shamans performing mystical dances and using invocations and amulets, and the Egyptian priests engaging in rituals and chanting mantras to manipulate invisible forces for healing. These practices, although lacking modern medical science, achieved extraordinary results. But let's not forget about the incredible understanding of vibrational therapy held by the Egyptians and Brahmins. They knew how to influence the body and mind using vibrations created by chants and mantras. These powerful sounds could stimulate latent centers of consciousness and enhance an individual's sensitivity. Isn't that mind-blowing? The magic of words and the dynamics of sound are emphasized in various traditions, highlighting the belief in the formative power of sound. Mystical concepts like the divine name and the AUM in Hinduism demonstrate the profound impact of sound. It's astonishing how ancient wisdom often mirrors the groundbreaking discoveries of modern science, isn't it? Unfortunately, conflicts and destruction have caused the loss of ancient records, depriving humanity of invaluable wisdom that could potentially solve many of our current problems. The transmission of esoteric knowledge has always been shrouded in secrecy and revelation. These ancient teachings have been safeguarded through the ages, passed down from wise individuals who understood their significance. And here we are today, unraveling the hidden truths of the past. So my fellow knowledge seekers, isn't it incredible how ancient civilizations possessed such profound wisdom about healing and the power of vibrations? This is just the tip of the iceberg in the secret knowledge of all ages. Stay tuned for more mind-blowing revelations and join me on this epic journey through time. Until next time, keep learning and keep exploring. Wow, what an amazing book, containing secrets from ancient civilizations and their healing practices the secret knowledge of all ages offers a glimpse into the wisdom of the past. From hermetic medicine to vibrational therapy, this book takes us on a journey through alternative healing methods 
that achieved extraordinary results. Join me as we unravel the hidden truths of the past and discover how ancient civilizations understood the power of sound and the importance of balance in our bodies. So grab your favorite cup of tea and let's dive into the secret knowledge of all ages.